G'day guys and gal, Warhammer Law is my bread and butter. That is what I've spent most of my time on and that is what I generally present to you. However, in recent times, I decided that spending hours and hours per day writing scripts and editing before then playing video games as my break time was pretty retarded. I decided to instead use that time to start learning how to paint Warhammer minis and within a pretty short amount of time, I was able to reach a semi-decent standard. Not pro, not even particularly good, but Decent. You may be wondering why watch this video when there is dozens of others from professional painters and that's because those guys are so good that they can often be not that great to watch when you're just getting started. Techniques and methods they consider child's play can be quite intimidating to new people and since I am pretty new myself, I understand that. I also want to provide everything you need for how to go from absolute trash shit painter to decent within only a month. And that's not even really a month of painting every day. I also don't use an airbrush yet just a brush. Another good reason to watch this and why I was able to get decent so quickly is because I had three or four professional painters giving me tips and instructions. The best tips they gave me I will share in this video so even if you're already a pretty good painter you may still learn a thing or two. What I'll do is when I reference something like brush maintenance I'll link a video in the description and show it in the video as the best one I found for that specific thing. That way this video is like a library of knowledge that will cover all your bases without talking for like 40 minutes. However to add to that I'll be showing off my two methods of painting white, a notoriously shit color to work with, as well as how to easily paint gold, as well as really nice looking gems. I'll also show a few other extremely awesome time-saving hacks, methods, and paints that take zero effort, but create really nice results. One of the best things I've done for my mental health lately is get into mini painting, and I highly recommend it. If you're looking for that first mini to paint, I'm gonna shamelessly plug the major minis, my own brand of handcrafted heroic scale miniatures that make a great addition to any army or the start of a new one. As most of them come as single models and are cheaper than GW, they are a great way to try out painting and deciding if that is something for you without spending your house. I've personally spent the last week painting the Major Mini Fire Lord and I'm loving it. Link for the Major Minis is below. Uh, let's get into it. I know you probably just want to jump right in and wing it, that's what I did, but you'll end up fucking up your first model, getting pissed off and then potentially rage quitting. These were my first custodies I painted and yeah, holy fuck, complete shit. Instead, if you take some time to figure out what the fuck you're doing, you can give your first model a genuine chance of success. To continue on my own example, this Custodes was my first proper model ever finished after I actually took the time to learn what I was doing. Meaning I went from this to this in only 30 days, and when I paint my next Custodes, it'll be a lot better. First up, you need brushes, and you need to know how not to fuck up your brushes. Amazon has nice cheap packs you can pick up that work decently well, and Squidma has an awesome video that I'll link below that goes over how to keep your brushes nice and maintained, or at least not totally fucked. And yes, you definitely do want to know how to maintain your brushes, especially if you end up getting nice ones down the track. The best thing I found personally was using brush soap, which Squidma also recommends. Another must have is a wet palette, basically a basic tool that auto thins your paints and makes your paint consistency a lot better. You know those nightmare fuel minis that are so thick with paint they look cancerous? Those people didn't use a wet palette. You can either buy one like I did or make one yourself pretty easily. Army Painter released a nice short video on how to use theirs and why it's good and I'll link that below. Next, you need paints and the model you want to paint. If you buy from GW, the model will come on sprues and you need to know how to properly remove them from the models, otherwise they can look a bit fucked with like little chips and shit. Squidma, my boy, has a short but super informative video on best practice for removing minis from sprues or if you buy a major mini, it comes without sprues or mold lines so it takes way less time to prep. Just remove the supports and bam, ready for painting. You also want to know which paints to get and the answer is it really depends what you want to paint. I personally would find a tutorial of the paint scheme you want to try and then see exactly what paints they used. After that, just order them online or go into your local Warhammer store. Most Warhammer painters will reference Citadel Paints, which is the official Warhammer paints in their videos. So to get to a decent standard, you don't need to own like five different brands. Although you will eventually if you keep at it. If you want to save money, Vallejo and Army Painter are two other big brands for mini painting that are a lot cheaper. Army Painter also has a sheet that talks about which paints match others from across the brands, which is super helpful. All right, you got your mini, your paint, hopefully some fucking glue, your brushes and your wet palette. You are officially ready to begin glue that little slut together, making sure you're using the right parts as my first three custodies used the wrong parts and completely fucked the models and I had to chuck them out. So yeah, don't be me. To get to a decent level in painting, all you really need is three basic techniques, base coat layers, shading and highlighting. To begin with, you don't need to worry about dry brushing, glazing, OSL, non-metallic metal, freehand and all that other shit. 
that will come later when you're ready and want to try it. For this, I'll paint up an Eldar Storm Guardian with you to show the techniques. An Eldar Guardian was also one of the first models I ever finished, so I wanted to bring that vibe back, but make it look even better. First up, you want to prime your mini. This is essential. I'm not going to explain why, but fucking prime your models, otherwise everything's fucked. I'm priming my model white as I want it to be a lighter color, and I also want to use a contrast paint for the body as my base coat. Contrast paints are basically just really thin paints that are lighter on raised surfaces and darker in the recesses. You can technically paint an entire model with just contrast paints, but in my opinion, it looks a bit shit. Contrast is a solid shortcut for base coating, but it shouldn't be relied on for the entire model. First up, I'm base coating Aldari Emerald all over the body armor. Lovely. Now the helmet is already white and I could leave it like that, but the issue with white is that there is no color brighter than it, so you can't highlight it. Same issue with black, but in reverse, you can't shade black. That's the two big issues with those two colors. However, there's two workarounds for white that I use. The first one, which we'll use here, is to coat the helmet in Ulth 1 gray, a gray that is very light and almost white. That way we can highlight the gray with pure white. I recommend Vallejo white as GW white sucks ass. This will mean we have the helmet that still looks white, but also is a little bit more dynamic than just one flat color. The second technique for white is to prime a model white and then the areas that will be white armor or white cloth or whatever, you wanna lather them in soul blight shade. When it dries, it'll have a lot of depth with the gray in the recesses, then simply re-highlight with white. That is the exact technique I did with my solar watch blade champion. I'll also base coat the gun Dawnstone Grey to match my old guardians and the plume of Fitston Red. We can leave the sword for now. Now your mini is base coated, you're gonna wanna shade it. Shading is easy, but can also get fucked up pretty bad. Yes, you could now just dunk your mini in null the oil, which would make it more dynamic and give it a lot more depth, but it'll also make your model super dirty and gritty. Just like how my old Eldar jet bike guy is. If you want a grim dark vibe, then yeah, nice. But that's not often what you want. Also, since we use the contrast paint, we don't really need much extra depth. However, here is a hack for ya. Fuck null oil, buy a pot of panel liner. It's a special paint that is a lot better to use for creating depth, as the black will seep and settle in all the nooks and crannies like magic. If it spills out onto other parts of the model, it's easy to paint over, or you can just use alcohol and a Q-tip to wipe it off, even when it dries. Massive hack, don't sleep on it. Now for the time consuming part, which to be honest, isn't totally necessary, but it will take your model from fine to decent. And that's highlighting, mainly just edge highlighting for now. What you wanna do is click the video in the description by Zumikido Miniatures. It's short, sweet, and shows you exactly how to edge highlight easily. He explains it way better than I ever could. For me, I'll be edge highlighting with lighter bluey green colors, like Sotek green and Gauss Blaster green as the top highlight. I'll be using two highlights, a thicker one and a thinner one. Then I'll be basically painting around all the edges until it looks fucking hectic. The brightness of your highlights is up to you. On my Dire Avenger Exarch, I use super bright highlights, which makes him pop more. However, for my old Guardians, I use more subtle highlights, which emphasizes their main color rather than contrasts with it. Bang! We now have a shaded, highlighted model that looks decent. That is the fundamentals and all you really need to know to get started. However, the model isn't done. How much more time you want to spend on it really dictates what else you'll do to it. Obviously, the gems and islands is a pretty essential and lucky for you, the technique for both is really similar. I have three gem painting techniques depending on what style you like. There is the gradient gem, the gradient with a bright crescent highlight at the bottom gem, then there is the only crescent technique. That's probably not actually the name of the techniques, I'm just, you know, talking shit. I would start with the gradient gem technique because it's the easiest and still looks dope. Basically, you paint the gem holder gold and then the entire gem black. After that, you paint 70% of the gem a dark color, then 50% with a lighter color, then 30% with a lighter color, then a final touch with the lightest color at the bottom, thus creating a gradient. To finish it off, you would then put a small white speck in the top corner to simulate light, then slap a layer of gouache varnish on it, and then bam, a nicely painted gem that was easy as fuck. For the Guardian, I'll use Corn Red into Mephiston Red into Scarlet Sun Red and the top color is Wild Rider Red. That's my gradient that I used on my Farseer's Red Head Gem and the technique I use for the rest of these gems. However, I've been personally enjoying the Crescent technique, so for the Guardian, I'll make the Wild Rider Red color a bit of a semicircle at the base of the gem. Just looks a bit better in my opinion. I use this technique for all my Dire Avenger Exarch gems. It takes a bit more brush control than just getting a gradient, but it isn't that bad or difficult. The only the crescent technique is cool but challenging. Here is what it looks like when a professional does it and here is my attempt at it. You basically do the gradient but every layer is a semicircle instead of just a layer. 
Don't sleep on gems, guys and gal. I've seen great paint jobs look a bit meh because of how plain and shit their gems are, with meh paint jobs looking great because of how detailed their gems are. They're super eye-catching and not particularly difficult or time-consuming. They will also greatly improve your brush control. I attribute my massive brush control improvement in a short amount of time to all the Elder and gems I painted. The best part about gems is if you want to go back later and make them better, then just paint the gem black and start again. Super easy. The eye lenses use the same technique as the gradient gem technique, starting with black towards the temple and then progressively lighter towards the nose, then a small spot of white where the black meets the first color layer to simulate the light. Bam! You now have awesome eye lenses and gems and it's your first ever model. Another easy way to make your model pop is by using transfers, those sticker looking things that are impossible to paint. They add an extra layer of polish and legitness to your model. I'll link my favorite tutorial for putting these on as well. Another big note, your model is not finished until it's based. It kind of pisses me off when people are like, hee hee, I finished my first model. And then the base is just completely untouched. Basting is piss easy. For my custodies, shield host Proteus, I gave them a Martian base that takes no time at all. GW even did an easy to follow tutorial on it that I'll link. My elder used a forest base, which was also easy as. Legit just used GW grass tufts, some fucking oregano, PVA glue, a muddy texture paint, and some tan bark, and bam, sorted. I'll link that tutorial as well. My fire dragons were similar to the forest base, but black with some ashes and ember. Once again, tutorial will be linked below. Three different, super easy bases that give the model that finishing touch. For my Guardian, who now has eye lenses, gems, based, highlighted, and shaded, he's ready to party. Tabletop legal and actually looks decent. No fancy shit at all. Yes, his sword isn't finished or looks that eye-catching, and to be honest, I'll probably end up giving him an Eldar Green Power Sword like I did with my X-Arch, but that does take a bit more time and patience. I'll link a good tutorial on that one below, but don't worry about moving into that glazing stuff yet. You'd be better off painting like another four of these guys, getting those reps in for the base techniques before then moving into the different, more difficult stuff. All right, now for a couple more hacks. Painting gold is easy. Take your model and prime it retributed gold. You can give it actually one or two primes or base coat it with a brush after to make sure the gold really pops. Then cover all the gold armor bits in Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. Then when it dries, do it again for the more detailed parts. Then when it dries again, give the model a really light dry brush of Stormhost Silver and BAM! You now have a dynamic gold with depth. Charlie, a friend of mine and an amazing painter, showed me this technique and he's a beast at it. This is his custodies using that exact same method. As for now making this custodies shoulder plates red and sexy without wanting to kill yourself, simply get a pot of X27 from Tamiya and then put a thick layer or two thin layers of the stuff in the areas you want red. The transparent red will react with the gold to create a beautiful cherry red that doesn't require any other bullshit like highlighting or glazing. It's done. I use this method for all my custodies and their shoulder plates, and I think it looks great. If you get some red outside of the designated area, just paint over it in retributed gold to clean it up. I sometimes use this method for eye lenses as well, when I don't think the gem gradient technique is appropriate. I'll paint the eye lens gold, then put the cherry red in it. Super easy and effective way to do a red eye lens. Another great hack when you are totally finished painting a mini is to spray it in satin varnish. This brand is sick. What that will do is not only protect the paint, but also give the entire model the same shine and texture, making all the paints come together a lot better. Also removing any glossiness that comes from overusing shades and it just brings everything together and makes it look mwah, finished. It also triggers a reaction with the cherry red to make it look a lot cleaner and more seamless. Here is the cherry red shoulder without being sprayed with satin varnish, and here it is with. When you spray it, just pretend you're repriming the model. The only thing to remember about it is if you are painting gems, put the gloss varnish on after the satin varnish spray, as the satin varnish will override it. The satin varnish will also make your transfers look a lot more seamless, as it will make them have the same shine as the rest of the model. Those are the hacks, cheeky tips, and shortcuts I've been given from industry professionals that I'm now giving to you guys and gal for free. You now know how to put a model together, paint it to a decent standard, and you could even add a few of the hacks to make it stand out way beyond your skill level. If this video gets just one person into the painting side of the hobby, I'll be happy, especially if they start with a major mini. I don't think I'll make more painting videos. Like I said, we're not that great, and I'm sure there is a few pros watching this wanting to kill themselves, but I did feel like having a fellow retard teach you dumbasses how to go from trash to okay has some value in it. A piece.